And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. We're back. Just uploaded, uh, I think, four video episodes of the show on the YouTube.com slash cpluscomedy, uh, where the show lives. Um, what's been going on? What's going on with me right now as we speak? Just got back from voting, early voting, so I can uh, not have to do that day of or next week. And uh, I went to the wrong place yesterday because I went to my usual place and that was where the website told me to go. And they said, no, that's wrong. We don't, we only do day of. And that's the end of that story. So I had to go to the library, which is fun. And then on my way back, this is the real thing I want to talk about. <laughs> on my way back, I get a text from, my, from a friend from the gym. He's just a friend uh, who also goes to my gym. <laughs> I got a text from this guy. He goes, Jonathan Majors is working out right next to me. And for a second, I'm thinking, nah, he's playing around. Because we, 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 we spoke about Jonathan yesterday. And he goes, no. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's very attracted to him. So he's trying to, he, like, he, he wants to say something, but he doesn't know what to say. And I'm like, oh, dude, I wish I could roll through. I like, but I, I, I went, again, I was voting. I went to Trader Joe's. I don't have any workout clothes. I do. There's it, this is very true. I do have a, a spare shirt. It's a t-shirt and a spare uh, set of shorts. Uh, those are um, they're running shorts, and, and in my car because uh, I am turning up the volume of this because I can't hear myself. I uh, you know you don't want to be in the situation where you where you're like oh well one time in college I we we went to a um, I was with this association this group and we went to a the zoo the chattanooga zoo one evening they let us they let the group have it have it for the night so we went to the zoo and this and i invited my friends who were not in the group because i needed people to talk to and i don't know any people <laughs> and i remember it was a very it was like a fall like today a fall day and it was chilly and i had a sweater on a sweater and jeans a sweater uh, an undershirt for the sweater and jeans <laughs> And I, I, we were crossing under the, the birds that they had for at this, at this uh, uh, zoo. I was going to say restaurant. <laughs> well, you know, I look at zoos as restaurants. If I want to eat a, a lion, I'm going to eat a lion. If I want to eat a, 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 thir- a tortoise, a 200, 400 pound tortoise, I would eat a 200, 400 pound tortoise. <laughs> Turtle soup. Anyway. And I was crossing under, we were crossing under these, these birds that were sitting, there were, there were big birds. And I, I, I truly don't, maybe let's just say peacocks, but they were sitting on top of this kind of a cage. Everybody was in a cage, uh, but unless for not forget, no one puts baby in a corner, but everybody was in a cage <laughs> and, but there was like this archway. And the birds could walk around on the archway and, you know, truly if they wanted to come down and talk to us, they could have. And this bird was sitting on top, this big, let's say peacock was sitting on top. And I was, and people were like, oh, we should watch out for bird poop. <laughs> and I remember people jumped across so that they didn't get pooped on. And I jumped across. And then I remember we were walking now in like the the water, uh, water fishy part of uh, uh, another enclosed space. And we were looking at fish. And then someone goes, you have poop on your shoulder. And I go, what? And it's just a big slathering of poop. That I didn't feel, and uh, that for several minutes, probably no one pointed out to me. And then uh, one of my friends gave me, he was wearing gym shorts under his pants, you know, thinking, I guess we're going to play basketball later. And he let me, uh, oh, wait. Yeah, because I had to change shorts. Oh, it pooped on my, my sh- okay, so yeah, I, yeah, poop, it, the poop must have gotten on my pants too. So he gave me a pair of uh, his the gym shorts he was wearing, and then I took off the sweater, and uh, and I was just wearing a t shirt and um, gym shorts. And then we played uh, dodgeball later that evening, and I remember being the only one prepared to play because <laughs> I had those clothes on. <laughs> anyway, Jonathan Majors was at my gym, and I wasn't there to witness it. Sorry, we work in the same industry. I could probably run into him anytime. Let's get to this, the Constitutionals podcast. I got to record uh, two of these today, at least a, a good, based on the amount of stories I have. I have to record two of these. 
And then I have to record a, an intro to an interview I had with my, Matt Bronger. Second interview with Matt Bronger. Uh, I was going to see, uh, not speaking of Matt Bronger, I was going to see um, Chris Gethard. He was going to be in Atlanta last week, last Friday. And they moved it, like on Thursday evening, they moved the show to January. And I was so I was so pumped. I was ready to go see him. And then they moved it. And I went, dang, that sucks. It has been cool to see him in real life and be like, I talked to you twice. <laughs> We're buddies now, right? This is some variety written by Todd Spangler. Spotify cancels 11 original podcasts, trimming Slate as part of focusing on bigger shows. About 5% of the streamers' podcasting staff will be laid off or reassigned, according to a source. Spotify. It's no mystery that they're trying to get big into the podcasting game, and here they are. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know if we know if they're doing well with that. You know, they can they can buy out Joe Rogan. They can get the Doughboys to do a Spotify live show. <laughs> I was listening to that show last night. It's, it's live on Thursday nights uh, on Spotify Live. You can listen on the app, or you can get the spotify live app so you listen to a spotify app or get a spotify live app if you want to talk to them and they, and they talk to the, the the listeners and everything and uh i like the doughboys this is just <laughs> spotify live sucks and and uh one of the hosts nick weiger was complaining about that uh spotify live stinks it, it really does anyway i think they would do better if they broke out they had because now they have audiobooks i think it'd be i think that would do better if they broke out those into separate apps because I, I did a story on I did a story this <laughs> I I did I did this on a podcast or something I think I don't know but I remember reading a story from the uh, either Wall Street Journal or New York Times talking about how these mega apps aren't aren't what people want anymore and mega apps in terms of you know it's just they fit as many features as possible instead of having you know. Uh, what Apple Music has Apple Music or Apple has Apple Music and then they have uh, p- podcasts and they have books. Spotify is putting everything in the one app and it's and it's so, like I just if I mean if anything it would be better if they at least had different sections in the app but I can find on one page audiobooks, podcasts and then music and music is what they're known for. Speaking of which, I knew Taylor Swift was out and it is good. <laughs> Listen to half of it at a gym, and then I realized I needed more power. <laughs> Just a little bit more power. <laughs> so I switched to classic rock, baby. They canceled 11 shows, Spotify, out of the 500 shows that they that are originals. The shows are from Gimlet, which they purchased. The company, one of the companies they purchased. And uh, let's see, where else, where else are they from? Each of the shows, uh, we're supposed to look at uh, it. Just said, I mean, it says it's, it's it, they list the shows, and it seems uh, Mr. Spangler lists the shows, and it seems like he says they're from uh, they're from Gimlet and then other places. Oh, they're from Parcast and from Gimlet. Okay, great. Put that in the sentence. No shows from Spotify Studios or the Ringer are being axed yet. We'll see. Other show, uh, the some of these shows will finish out this year, or they'll uh, one of them is extending into the second quarter of 2023. Uh, they're going to focus on a lot of their hit shows, like Meghan Markle's show, uh, the uh, Warner Bros. and DC Batman show, Alex Cooper's ugh, Call Her Daddy. I hate that. I hate I with all of my passion. I hate that, and I hate Barstool. I hate that entire culture. Uh, and then Kim Kardashian's newly launched the system. The shows that pull in the money, it was what it seems like. The shows that advertisers really want to ad- advertise on. And it's the same issue we had with uh, Earwolf and, and Midroll and uh, and now, I guess, Sirius XM because it owns all those 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 companies. But it's it's this idea that this online radio platform that was not making money before and, and then when people start making money – the people who relied on this uh, 10, you know, 11, 12 years ago. And and then when uh, some TV show people or movie people go, hey, I want to do this too. And then they decide, 
and and then advertisers are going, you know, Ford and Walgreens, they're all going, yeah, let's advertise with these. Uh, and you know, we've never we never heard podcasting before. <laughs> um, it's a shame. It's a shame that these shows have to get axed because probably because of money. Uh, and there's utility in these shows. I mean, I've never listened to How to Save a Planet, but I mean, you know, there's uh, it's someone's favorite show. There's uh, there's a couple of murder shows, I guess. <laughs> and criminal things but i mean if i mean these shows aren't weekly a lot of them probably aren't weekly a lot of them probably run by seasons but i i can only imagine that they're not they don't cost a ton to to produce you're just paying some poor contractor to to work on a couple of shows and then and then that's it i it you know and then spotify re- declined to renew uh obama the obama's uh exclusive deal and and they went to Audible instead, and you know the podcasting is it, it's a it's a loss it's a losing business. You know it's not like it's not like uh, uh, TV streaming. It's not like streaming movies. Netflix is eventually going. I mean, they're still. I mean, technically, they're still on top. You know, Disney Plus is going to is going to be on top. Uh, HBO Max, the rest of them. But when it comes to this podcasting thing, there's because with TV, there's. There's and movies. There are unions. There's uh, there's things. There's minimums. There's all this stuff. But with podcasting, you tossing you know two hundred million dollars at Joe Rogan isn't going to make his show sound better. It's just gonna, he's going to do the same show, but exclusively for you. And as as it turns out, Spotify's podcasting business is not the best. In twenty twenty one, it generated nearly. 200 million quid in revenue in uh, 20 in that year with a negative gross margin of <laughs> negative 57 percent Jesus <laughs> Woo. Uh, the podcast losses are projected to be higher this year uh, within the next five years Spotify projects the podcast business to turn a profit uh, with gross margins of 40 to 50 percent what happens if podcasting numbers went down when the pandemic started. So what happens, God forbid, if there's another pandemic, you people, people aren't like, you know, not a lot of people are like me who, who will just like (laughs) turn on a podcast, put on a video game and just like sit there and play for an hour. Uh, It's, you know, podcasting is kind of the wild, wild west. It's it's, there's a wild, wild west. There's like, there's no way, (laughs) there's no way for everybody to come out on top as there is for uh, a streaming platform because again those those things are easier to tackle versus you know podcasting can either be hyper specific or this broad thing where hey we're going to talk it's three celebrities talking to another celebrity let me let me rephrase that three white guys talking to another white guy uh, smartless podcast <laughs> And as it turns out, this is from Jay Clara Chan over at The Hollywood Reporter. Gimlet and podcast unions decry podcast cancellations. Now, these unions were formed prior to them being sold off to uh, Spotify. Excuse me, not they're not, uh, 10 of them are not ending at the end of the year. They're ending next month. That's crazy. The staffers of the union said they felt blindsided by the decision. And uh, that 5%, let's put those in the to numbers that we can actually use, 38 uh, people. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I was going to say percent. 38 people. 38 people at least are about to be uh, laid off. And uh, it, look, coming from uh, someone who was laid off, coming from someone who uh, is in a company right now that is laying off people, uh, it's not fun. And it sucks to be in a position where you're just constantly looking over your shoulder. Uh, I mean, I'm looking over my shoulder all the time anyway, but uh, it's... It is, uh, it is, it is, if you are here in construction, it's because that is what's happening outside. Uh, but that, I mean, it really stinks. It, uh, it, I, I mean, 38 people are losing their jobs or may, and they, and there's a possibility they could be reassigned, but they have 500 shows. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, in a joint statement, the Gimlet and Podcast Union said the layoffs resulted in each of their bargaining units losing about 30% of their members. The Gimlet Union has 50, the Podcast Union has 49, uh, and this is and the unions are under, are filed under the Rioters Guild of America East, which I did not know. But it says WJ East on their badges. 
Spotify also allegedly gave some impacted employees, quote, as little as an hour to close out their work. Imagine being working on a show, working on the next episode of a show and then being told, hey, finish up by two. You're gone. After being informed of the cancellations, according to the statement, and said the company, quote, failed to give any explanation for how they evaluated who would be let go. Oh, my God. Why do we keep giving Spotify uh, the benefit of the doubt? Why do we keep letting them do these things? Like, the the unions should, uh, something should happen. Something, like, if especially if these people are part of this union, something legal should go down because that is ridiculous for them to be to for them to be able to do that and get away with it too. I I mean it's Spotify is in the wrong here and they will continue to be in the wrong just because you're the leading music streaming service doesn't mean you can you know treat I mean and I mean it even extends past the uh is that the third time I said that? It even goes past that because it go it goes from podcasting to music because you know, you're still not paying your artists a fair or anything. Just look at the numbers. Spotify, you're trash. Title. <laughs> also title. All right. Let's move on. God, I wonder what Jonathan Major's doing right now. Probably stretching. It's 1126. See, I got the text at like 1030 something. Yeah, he's probably done. This comes from Variety. Oh, this is uh, two weeks old at this point. <laughs> Written by Zach Scharf and William Earl. Why did Billy Eichner's bros bomb at the box office? Straight people aren't entirely to blame. As we know, bros uh, launched in late August, or late September, rather. And it was supposed to be this big opening. Every, not everybody, but people thought it was going to be this big opening. And uh, it did not do well. It, in fact, it was... <laughs> I would say one of the biggest flops of the year. I mean, I'm sure you know that uh, Alec Baldwin's Rust could come out and it'd still do well. It'd still do better than Bros. <laughs> and then Billy Eichner, I think in like day two of uh, of the of the movie being out, that it was a three day weekend. Um, it or no, excuse me, it just it was a regular weekend. Uh, he. He he tweeted and he blamed uh, straight people for not going to see the movie. The, there's a there's a lot wrong with even if it was a joke. There's a lot wrong with uh, with what he's saying. Uh, the movie the movie did well critically, and if that if that matters to you, all the Rotten Tomatoes and the cinema scores and all that stuff, it uh, it did fine. But blaming straight people for not going to see a movie is like blaming white people for not going to see uh Black Panther, you know, or Black Klansman. Or what's the one that came out last year with um uh oh jeez, with it was about Fred Hampton. Oh god, what was that movie called? Uh Judas and the Black Messiah. It's like it's like blaming white people for not seeing that, which is absolutely wrong. Now there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of explanation as to why it did not play well. Uh, one of them could be that because middle middle budget comedies just don't fit into movie theaters anymore, which sucks. I mean, everybody, it, it, you know, if a, if a if a movie's gonna do, you know, decently, it's either got to be a a budget big budget blockbuster like um, uh, Spider Man, or it's got to be a, an indie film that is gonna spark talk like the movie um x or the barbarian and even and even then you know what's good for them is not the same as what's good for the other but as mr sharf and mr earl mr sharf and earl right for variety the uh I th- okay, so the biggest the biggest thing that I agree with that I've seen a lot of people talk about is the uh, the marketing of the film was talking about the importance rather than it being a comedy. The the and the quote unquote importance was that is that the movie is about it's it's a queer love story 
and it's a it's a uh, it's a huge comedy you know starring um these these people that you should know uh that is that is the thing i think that's the biggest issue every single trailer i saw a did not feature a person of color <laughs> with the exception of the trailers that came out you know late summer but every trailer that came out before then did not did not feature one person of color uh but b the talked about how the movie was how this is going to be groundbreaking how this is setting this is the stepping stone for all queer people uh the argument there is or for coming from the people that uh that agree with me the people i'm right uh that was that we're talking about this is that movies let's go back to black panther and let's also bring in crazy rich asians uh and let's and let's bring in in the heights as well um even though it didn't do as well as those other two movies those are movies starring people of color uh or and or queer people yeah 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 okay that had trailers that promoted the film not the message of the film uh and in terms of crazy rich asians and in the heights there was no message <laughs> but uh, the it, they didn't talk about the messages of the film it did, uh, it showed it showed who was in it what the movie was about what you it, you know for black panther it hyped you up for in the heights it it was getting ready to tell you this amazing story for crazy rich asians it was introducing you to this uh, beautiful opulent world that is on the other side of the planet and yet for bros they were it was just we this is a movie and it's the biggest thing for gay people and no one's and no one's ever gonna do this again and and we are the first ones and you better love it or else and 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 i think when you talk down to your audience like that and 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 make no mistake i do want to see this movie and now that uh i, I know that there are people of color in it um uh, still two white guys dating each other. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, but, but before, you know, prior to me even going onto IMDb and, and, and seeing these last few trailers, I had no interest in this because it just seemed like another thing that just wasn't for me. And sometimes these things aren't going to be for you, for, uh, for everyone. People just, sometimes people just don't like rom-coms. I love a good rom-com. I mean, I'm sick of it. <laughs> My life is a rom-com. Uh, more, uh, uh, less rom, <laughs> more calm. Oh, that's a better title than what I wrote down earlier. <laughs> less rom, more calm. Okay. The other one of the other things that uh, Mr. Earl and Sharp point out. <laughs> Is that the star power wasn't there? I don't know if that's necessarily true. I do think that the that if you know who Billy is, then you know who pretty much, pretty much the rest of the cast uh, were. Like Guy Branum, you you know, like uh, the I don't know who who's Billy's opposite leading person was, but oh Luke McFarlane, excuse me. Uh, and and they say they aren't the the best uh, box office uh, uh, draws here. Which makes sense. Bullet Train, like Brad Pitt, he it raked in thirty million dollars, and uh, Viola Davis's Woman King started off with nineteen million. I do think that those movies, while they are bigger than um, uh, Bros comparatively, they're not necessarily the, you know, even though Brad Pitt and Viola Davis are two of the biggest. Is look, Woman King it didn't have a message to show. It was just it's like, hey, here's a movie about a woman who's a king in Africa or wherever I don't know, uh, but. <laughs> But uh, while those while those two movies are bigger comparatively, it, those aren't necessarily, and those numbers aren't um, uh, uh, representative of of what those names can typically pull in. Why am I defending Brad Pitt and Violet Davis? <laughs> Lost City, Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, that had a uh, one hundred and five million dollars in the U.S. Uh, George Clooney, Julia Roberts is uh, it's gonna it's gonna debut big when that airs this week. I think I don't know. I think of movies as airing as TV shows. Uh, and then they say October is hard for rom-coms. Uh, it's true. We see these numbers. Serendipity did not did not do too hot when it came out. That's John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale and uh, uh, Catherine Heigl's and Josh Duhamel's Life as We Know It, which is a movie I did not know existed. 
Um, but yeah, sometimes these movies just don't do well. October is seen as a uh, horror month and, you know, having, you know, I, the barbarian is out, um, uh, uh, terrifier two, uh, a movie I've heard about. I've never seen anything about the, that one or the first one, but these things, when you have to compete with a th- uh, an entire theme month, I mean, come on. Consumers are stra- distracted by strong streaming movies. Yeah, that's true. Blonde came out. Hocus Pocus too. Uh, but I mean, but in any case, I do think that stream. I think that is a bad. Uh, uh, um, they also say has the bubble tarnished Judd Apatow. The bubble was a movie that was shot in a bubble, uh, uh, making fun of other movies, uh, in particular Jurassic World Extinction. I think that's what's called. Um, and uh, talking about how everybody got sick because of, you know, and COVID and everything. And that movie sucks so much that it took me, I think three weeks to watch it. Um, oh, d- just over the course of, you know, one day I watched like two thirds of it. And then another day I watched like a, the, like a half of that. And then another day I tried to finish it out and it was just so tough anyway. But, uh, when I, I do think that going back to, to the stronger streaming releases, I do think that. People can press pause <laughs> or they can watch two movies in a weekend. <laughs> they can watch blonde or they like on a Friday, they go, I'm going to stay in. I've had a hard, I had a hard work week. Let me just turn on blonde. And then on Saturday I go, all right, well, or Sunday, eh, well, maybe I'll watch uh, the bros. Yeah. I think those, I think those are, uh, that, that is an argument that could be dispelled at any point. Also from Hollywood Reporter, written by Richard Newby, when bros bomb, Billy, uh, star Billy Actor put the blame on the audience. And, and I do, and you know, and I, yes, I do think part of the blame can go to the audience, but only like just like the most minuscule part where it's it's not really the fault of the people who don't go, uh, especially, you know, if they want to put it off to the week after because they think there's going to be a rush uh, or if they want to, I don't know, wait till it gets to home releases. Uh, I mean, you know, it's like when you look at, when you look at uh, something like uh, uh, Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise fought to to have that movie inside theaters, A, and then B, inside theaters for as long as possible, and then C, not to reach uh, your homes for uh, digital DVD and Blu-ray and 4K until November. And then on the other hand, you have this movie, Bros, which fought for <laughs> fought for a theatrical release and then just stunk, just stunk up that entire release. It's not to say that these things can't survive, but I think there just needs to be a different tactic. And that comes from the release strategy of saying this is the most important movie in the world. Uh, comedies just don't draw huge crowds as uh, mr newbie writes here and and you know when when people want to leave their homes they're not going to want to go see a middle budget comedy they want to go see that indie movie that they that they don't know when's going to come to streaming and or they want to go see the big movie the big bombastic thing that that's going to you know and uh, they can sit back in their recliner chairs and have a a, a ten dollar bucket of twelve dollar bucket of popcorn and and for two hours, you know, get lost in the screen that's bigger than their house. <laughs> oh, he also points to uh, Long Shot, which is a, a rom-com that I love so much. There's a joke in there that just made me die laughing when I watched it uh, at home, obviously. But Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron's uh, Long Shot, which un- underperformed uh, at, at the box office as well. It opened at $9.7 million. Huh, jeez, and Bros and Bros did just that too. Wow, that's it. That's interesting. I didn't know it opened uh, that poorly. Did I rent that movie? I had I watched it at home. I remember that much. I think I paid to watch it though. I think I paid you know like the twelve or fifteen or however much it cost or seven dollars to, to rent it at home and watch it. But I mean, but even still, I think. If there's movies that, because I, I saw the Lost City in theaters, and uh, which is a bad decision, but if, <laughs> but I do I do think that if there's movies that can take you away now, like the, I think the Lost City was, 
you know, it, it, they they took you to to go to go find this lost city. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I remember everything that happened in that movie. That's crazy. <laughs> they go down to the to the inside of this uh, temple in the middle of the earth. It's crazy. Anyway, uh, but if it can take you away, and if it can show you something that you can't be shown at home, then I think that. Uh, or or make you feel something that you can't feel at home. Let's let's go back to Spider Man. Let's go back to the Batman. For even I, I watched that in theaters. That uh, both Sp- Spider Man No Way Home and uh, the Batman, both of those are t- 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 take away the superhero aspect, but both of those are these these giant things that just wouldn't feel right sitting on the couch. Same thing for Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, I agree with Tom Cruise, but also I want to buy this movie on 4K and have the disc in my hands. <laughs> Uh, same thing for Scream and uh, Nope and Barbarian. These are well, even though I saw Nope in a drive-in theater, but uh, Scream and Barbarian, you want to sit in an audience and watch these things. Again, I don't. I don't want to do that. I I am perfectly capable of going to a movie theater and being alone. That's how I saw a lot of speaking of uh, mid-range comedies, middle middle-range comedies. That's how I saw a lot of movies like The House, Trainwreck. Uh, it'll be a Saturday morning at ten eleven o'clock when I lived in the suburbs at home. That's how I saw those movies. It, yeah, it's just, you know, you again, pointing to the audience is a cop-out. You trying to find the that as the reason uh, as to why, you know, you didn't do well, that's that's only going to hurt you in the end. Even if it's even if you are going like even if you're like, oh, I'm, a, I'm just being a snarky little jokester that does come off as uh, a little bit petty. And maybe you have some more colored people in the movie. I don't know. <laughs> hey, this final thing. Dade Hayes over at Deadline writes, Comcast pulls a plug on G4 TV and then come back try for Gamer Focus Network, which is odd considering that... So uh, G4 was canned last week for the second time. Uh, and the I think like maybe a month prior, they did layoffs, which really, really sucks. Uh, what it boils down to is G4 TV is a, uh, um, a tech TV channel in the early 2000s. It aired shows like uh, X Play, which is like a game review show and game feature show, and Attack of the Show, which was a var- uh, not a variety show, excuse me, like a new, eh, like a news comedy variety entertainment thing, entertainment show, yeah, uh, a lot like News Time, but better, <laughs> and, and at least at least consistent. The thing is, since this show, since excuse me, since this network was announced to be brought back by Comcast, the original people who pulled the plug, uh, it has just been given way. It, 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 excuse me, it was given way too much money. Not has it was given too much money, and uh, they expected so much from it. They expected so 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 much from it. They they brought it back to cable. Uh, and by cable, I mean they brought it back. Well, they did bring it back to like Xfinity, but they also brought it back to YouTube. They brought it to YouTube TV and Philo and um, those other internet streamers. Uh, then they then they also had a 24 hour uh, channel on Pluto that just ran you know reruns and stuff. They uh, they did a years long you know build up hiring you know all these internet people to to do coverage and stuff and then they would eventually lay i think maybe 20 30 percent of those people off um not not including like the staff they laid off as well they bought this big uh or or they had this they had this big space they had offices they had studios and it was just too much too fast at one time uh what it should have been, and I think this is the general consensus with the community, is that because I'm, I'm a huge fan of G4 and I watched all of this Attack of the Show and X-Play and, and uh, that's all the show. That's, I didn't watch anything else. Uh, but they hi- I think they hired too many people. I think they they definitely uh, did way, way, way too much, way too fast. It was, it was just not what they should have done. And the, again, this is the consensus. What they should have done was start internet-based. Do, uh, do Twitch streams, do YouTube streams. And then work your way up from there. But Comcast and NBC Universal, they just want they wanted it to be, you know, hey, we can we can, we see revenue stream in this, and uh, and let's see what happens. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and you know, and, and now these people don't have jobs, and 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 you know, it's 
it's gone. It's gone again, and and people were really excited to have this back, uh, including myself. So it stinks to have it gone again, and it's never coming back. <laughs> that like it is go- It is that is dead, dead, dead. Uh, but it was nice while it lasted, and they were on a roll for a little bit. But you didn't need the money that could that was going to carriage, you know, like to carry the thing on uh, the channel. Uh, that's that was that was a waste. That could have been allocated towards people. Um, and the reason they canceled it was because they just didn't see uh, revenue coming from it. The what the revenue that they wanted. Again, it this this. It is unfortunate to see it go again. Um, should have started off on the internet, but that's where that's where game coverage is now. They should have teamed up. I thought about this the day I heard this. They should have teamed up with Jeff Keeley, uh, who runs the Game Awards, and they should have worked from there. Like that's where it should have gone. It should have been, a, it should have been a Twitch channel and a YouTube channel for the for the VODs, and that's and that's it. It should not have been anything else, in any form of anything. Speaking of things that shouldn't be anything else or any form of anything, one, <laughs> if you like this video, if you like this podcast, you'll see a video version of the show. Head to youtube.com slash C plus comedy, baby. Oh, the construction guys are back. It's almost lunchtime now. I probably should have recorded this at lunchtime. YouTube.com slash C plus comedy. I promise I am 20, I'm not joking, 20 episodes behind on news time. And I I will do them all. I will do them all. And I'll never be behind again because I will end the show. <laughs> That's very true. Ugh, I hate that show so much. But it's coming. I'll do it. News time is like the daily show except bad. Uh, <laughs> what else? What else is going on? I got interviews coming out. There's also the interviews if you want to see me interview people. Uh, on this podcast feed, uh, if you want to see the video version, there's a, a their show called The Interviews. So I guess I should actually promote that. C Plus Comedy is on TikTok, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, at C Plus Comedy. Me on, not TikTok, but on Instagram and Twitter, at Chad Black White. Like the show on Facebook. Rate, review, subscribe to the show wherever you get it. Listen to Taylor Swift's Midnights. That's a free plug for my baby girl. Uh, it's not sexual. I do not like her because I don't think she likes black people. Uh, the end. Bye.